In 2021, when you hear that the WWE is about to make a movie, it's impossible to not laugh. Shoot me, stab me, torture me like it's GTA 5, but there is no way in hell you're getting me to watch The Marine 6, Jingle All The Way 2, or an American Christian drama film named The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. I'd rather use this guy's defense techniques in a fight than endure any of the recent WWE movies. Their film division has become straight to DVD heaven. Imagine the DVD bin at Walmart. I promise you, if you go looking in there, 75% of it will be WWE studio films. And the best part is, you won't even notice. They're out here making the most random films that make no sense. Here's Blood Brothers, starring Trey Songs, Fetty Wap, and R Truth. Wait, what? Or how about armed response with Wesley Snipes. I had never seen a movie with a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes until now. But of course, WWE is always breaking records. Wait, are action movies not your taste? Well, how about this? WWE Studios presents Pure Country, Pure Heart, an American country musical. This has a 4.6 on Amazon, so maybe I'm just stupid. But before WWE Studios was doing whatever the hell is doing right now, they had bigger aspirations. They actually had movies that saw the inside of a movie theater. Listen, back in the day, the WWE had me believing that they were dropping bangers on bangers. When I saw the commercial for the marine you couldn't tell me that this wasn't going to be the best action movie of all time i wasn't the brightest of the bunch as you guys know but the other day after coming across one of these horrible films on google i felt the need to go back i wanted to take a look back at wwe studios and this strange history and i wanted to see the good the bad and the ugly and it all began in 1988 14 years before the studio was even created to simply put it, one day Vince McMahon just woke up, looked at Hulk Hogan, his cash cow, and was like, you know what, let's make a movie. Okay, not that type of movie. Vince was like, yo, we have this larger than life monster, we got millions of fans around the world, we sell merchandise like it's crack, let's take over the movie world. It was a next logical step. So Vince put down $8 million of his own money with the idea of branching out. He wanted to be as mainstream as possible, and what better way to do that than make a movie, and they made no holds barred. This was going to make Hogan, who had a small role in Rocky III, Hollywood's next big star. This was going to launch the WWF into bigger and better spaces. This was going to start the revolution. This was going to be the start of movie franchises, making movies with every wrestler you could imagine. Honky Tonk Man, Hillbilly Jim, everyone. This was going to change the world. And then it flopped. No, 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 like, like it flopped, flopped. Every single critic who ended up watching this movie hated the movie. Critics were acting like this was the biggest disgrace in the movie world you could possibly imagine. But somehow, through the support of the WWF fans, the movie just made enough money to break even. But after this failure, the WWF and Vince McMahon just pretended that movies did not exist. As the years went on, Hogan kept trying to keep his hairline and his Hollywood career intact, but it did not work. Other wrestlers appeared in movies and shows and everything was okay. But then everything changed when this guy ended up having a role in The Mummy Returns in 2001. The Rock was in The Mummy Returns for like 5 minutes, but he killed it so hard that Universal Studios, before the movie even came out, signed The Rock for his own starring role in the spinoff, The Scorpion King. But what was special about that deal was, someone also got a cut on that deal. A special someone who wanted revenge from Hollywood. Vince McMahon was going to serve as the executive producer of The Scorpion King. After 13 years in exile, the big Mac man was back in Hollywood. So in 2002, The Scorpion King came out and they actually had a successful movie and it launched The Rock into Hollywood stardom, but it also gave the big Mac man the boost that he wanted. He decided to create WWE films. This time it was for real, Vince was back in Hollywood, now it was time for world domination, now it was time to get payback at Hollywood for what they did to him in 1989. We'll make movies. You're goddamn right Vince. So, to get the wheel spinning for the first few years, they made a few joint projects with other studios which featured none other than The Rock, and these were solid solid films. Honestly, these two movies, The Rundown and Walking Tall, are my two favorite Rock movies anyway. But the WWE did not want to be The Rock films, no, they were WWE films. So after The Rock officially left the company in 2005 to go on his own in Hollywood, it was time to begin the takeover. They announced three films, and unlike the past three films, these were going to be solely made by the WWE. 
WWE. And this is where it gets fun. Let's start off with the Marine. The Marine was going to be way different than what it ended up being. This movie was going to star Stone Cold Steve Austin as the lead and have Robert De Niro. Yes, the Robert De Niro as the villain. But then Stone Cold did not want to go to Australia for two weeks. And De Niro, well, let's just say they lowballed him and he felt like he wasn't getting offered nearly as much money as he was worth. So bye bye Steve Austin, bye bye De Niro, and welcome John Cena and the T-1000 from Terminator 2 as the villain. And this movie, oh my god. God, it does not get more cheesy basic action movie than this one. John Cena, who is a discharged Marine in the movie, his wife gets taken hostage by a bunch of bad guys, so this guy just goes full out Rambo mode and nobody is safe. Like I said, as a kid, did I love the movie? For sure. But watching this now, okay, I don't even know where to start. First of all, this movie came out in 06, filmed in 04, but it looks like it was made in 1998. The special effects, no, 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 what are special effects? There is nothing in this movie that looks realistic. It's actually jokes. The explosions, the gunshots, the story, it does not get cheesier than this. Yo, just look at these effects. Look at the fire. How is that even possible? No, this movie makes no sense, but that's what makes it so great because I swear to you, this is one of the best comedy movies you will ever see in your life. This movie is unintentional hilarious and y'all thought Super Cena was OP in wrestling? You have not seen him in the Marine. He was literally John Rambo on Bat Salts. This movie cost roughly 18 million dollars to make and brought in 22 million dollars at the box office. That is horrible. Those are the type of numbers that should probably get your studio shut down and they tried so hard to push this movie. They even had Cena become a Marine in real life. Out here dressed in camo and saluting, it was the most confusing thing ever. Last year this guy's a rapper, now he's actually thinks he's a Marine? What the fuck? fuck is going on? WWE films definitely started with a bang in 06 because the same year they also released a horror movie See No Evil featuring Kane. I would see the trailers for this movie on TV and I would really be shook. They would hype this movie up so much during Raw and Smackdown and the movie did look terrifying. Even the poster was great. And best of all, Kane in real life looks like a serial killer. So it was perfect and this movie had potential. A group of delinquents are sent up to clean up the abandoned hotel in exchange for shorter sentences. Little do they know that a psycho psychopathic murderer has been hiding out there. Okay, okay, pretty basic story, but I'm excited. What's the catch? Oh, this is the director's first film actually. Oh, okay, that's fine. Has he done anything else like music videos or anything? Has he directed anything else before? Uh, yeah, uh, porn. Out of every director in this world, out of every single idiot who claims to make movies, the WWE Films Division brought this guy to direct their horror movie. You can't make this shit up, but somehow, some way, they made a decent slasher film. It's dark, it's gory, it's Kane running around just destroying and killing. Did it make any money? No, of course not. Did critics hate it? Of course. But I'm gonna be honest, it's not that bad. It could have been much, much worse. Which brings us to 2007, the end of the OG3 movie announcement. It was time for The Condemned. This one was supposed to be the one, starring Stone Cold Steve Austin, the biggest draw in wrestling history, released during WrestleMania season, a concept that at the time to me was like, whoa, this was like the OG Hunger Games, this was like the OG Squid Games, even the poster made the movie look so badass. 10 will fight, 9 will die, you get to watch. They had a 20 million dollar budget. The future of the studio basically lied in the hands of this movie. 10 prisoners dropped on an island, fighting for survival, it was hype, I was excited, everyone was excited, and then it only made 8 million dollars at the box office. They lost 12 million dollars making this movie. And the movie's not even that bad, but yo, they just got clapped. Every single WWE film flopped at the box office. All three movies have less than 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. It, it just, GG. They literally just got clapped. I don't know what else to say. But the funny part is, growing up, we had no idea. I really thought that these movies were awesome and they were huge and popular. They made crazy money. And even though, looking back, the movies are not good, they do have a soft spot in my heart. It was fun seeing John Cena blow shit up or seeing Kane finally kill people, Austin survive a battle royale, and even though the critics hated it, I know for sure there are some people who genuinely liked and enjoyed these movies, 
and that's really good. But what sucks is these movies could have been so much better if they hired different directors and producers and writers, if they took it a little more seriously. Instead, every movie was just the most typical film of the genre. By 2008, it was already GG. WWE released a straight to DVD movie featuring Mr. Kennedy called Behind Enemy Lines Columbia, which honestly, if you watch this, what is, what is wrong with you? Even when I was 10, 11 years old, I would see trailers and commercials for this, see it on magazines. There was never any bit of me where I'm like, yeah, I really want to watch the new Mr. Kennedy movie. But the last hurrah for a true WWE Studios film was made in 2009, when the GOAT John Cena held it down. The last movie made by the company that had a proper release in theaters that actually starred a wrestler in the leading role. 12 rounds. I don't care what anyone says, this movie is fire. This movie made me wish that one day in the future my wife would get kidnapped so I could go full John Cena mode. It's literally a more grounded marine. Is it still insane? Oh, for sure. It's totally mental. But I love this movie. When I watched it back in 09, I was glued and even to this day, it's such a guilty pleasure. Danny Fisher is a cop who prevents a billion thief from successfully carrying out his latest heist. The thief's girlfriend is accidentally killed. Hungry for revenge, the criminal mastermind breaks out of prison and kidnaps Danny Danny's fiance. To save her, Danny must successfully navigate his way through an elaborate series of tasks and puzzles, or else watch the love of his life die. I don't know, maybe I'm just a dumbass, but this movie was intense, it was creative, non-stop thrills, and it's honestly just a guilty pleasure. This movie was like a low budget tribute to like Die Hard. And best of all, the movie finally made money. A WWE Studios movie finally made money at the box office. They had a $7 million budget and ended up making $17 million at the box office. Finally. But after that, it was over. After just four years of releasing films, the WWE knew it had to change up. After 2009's 12 rounds, the floodgates were open and the WWE was basically banned from the movie theaters. So they just started pumping out straight to DVD low budget movies like their lives depended on it. What happened was they realized even though the Marine flopped in theaters, Somehow that movie made $27 million on DVD. See No Evil made $45 million on DVD and The Condemned made $23 million. So there was definitely a market and as a result, they just made the cheesiest, like even more cheesy than before, typical low budget movies. Honestly, I can't even say they're typical because some of them are just weird. They had Big Show in a diaper, Triple H as the chaperone, and no, you thought the Marine 1 was whatever? Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't stop there. No, they gave you the Marine 2, Marine 3, Marine 4, Marine 5, Marine 6. No, it became a mess. It became a meme. There is no reason for there to be six Marine movies. And that's where we are now, where they just make the most random movies. Every now and then, they'll throw a wrestler in there, but... They're just making literally the most random movies you could possibly imagine. Country musicals, Christian dramas, buddy cop movies featuring washed up stars. And apparently somehow they're making money. But the weirdest part is every now and then they'll actually produce a really solid movie that makes money and critics don't totally hate and movies that become fan favorites. You know the movie The Call with Holly Berry? That's a WWE film. I don't know how, I don't know why, but it's a WWE film that made a decent amount of money, got nominated for a decent amount of awards, and is a fan favorite. They also had a movie called Oculus in 2013, which was a horror movie with solid reviews and solid box office. So it's like, they can make solid movies, it's just apparently they don't want to. But yeah, like I said, clearly what they're doing is working, they're making money, and they keep going and going, and it's such such a story. What a random story. The idea started with such great promise. You had The Rock, Stone Cold, John Cena, and you had all the money in the world to make these movies, and you had such great promise, and it could have been amazing, but it ended up with this. Just imagine if the WWE just put a little more effort into their films, got different directors or producers, cared a little more, wanted to make some good movies. I don't know, it could have been special. I honestly believe that the studio could have been something legit. Instead, we got Big Show in a diaper. What a time to be alive.